Now I want to turn to the pattern of the ministry of Jesus in this particular aspect of deliverance from evil spirits. And I want to read from Mark chapter 1 a description of the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. Beginning at verse 21. Mark 1, 21. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. The Greek says, in an unclean spirit. And I want to suggest to you that that man had probably been attending the synagogue like a good religious Jew for many, many, many years. But it says, and he, and if you read it carefully, it's not the man, it's the spirit. He cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now it's a remarkable fact that the demon in the man immediately knew who Jesus was. It took his disciples about 12 months to discover what the demon already knew. So we're dealing with people with supernatural knowledge. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet. The, the Greek says, be muzzled and come out of him. Now Jesus was not speaking to the man. He was speaking to the demon in the man. It's very important to see that. There comes a point when we don't deal with people, we deal with the demons in people, whether they're in us or in other people. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. You see, you have two persons. He, the demon, came out of him, the man. So there was more than one person there. There was the man, and there was the person of the demon or the evil spirit in the man. And Jesus did not deal with the man. He dealt with the demon in the man. And he was not embarrassed. Now, that kind of behavior took place in some churches, including Pentecostal churches. You know what they do? They'd lead the man out and put him in the basement and let one of the deacons take care of him. And I'm not theorizing, I've seen that happen. Thank God we don't have to take the man out of the church, we have to take the demon out of the man and let the man stay in the church. Then it says they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, what, saying, what is this, a new doctrine? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. I want to point out to you that Jesus was not first acknowledged as the Son of God or the Messiah. What first attracted people to him was he had power to deal with demons, and that caused his reputation to go all around that whole area. And then we read a little further on. In verse 32 to 34. Now at evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. Now demon-possessed is a bad translation. And I'm really upset with the NIV which in many ways has modernized English, that they've gone back to this old-fashioned religious language, demon-possessed. And I'll tell you why I object to it, because the word possessed suggests ownership. If you're demon-possessed, then you're owned by a demon. Now, I don't believe that any born-again, sincere Christian can be owned by a demon. I do not believe any sincere, born-again Christian can be demon-possessed. But the Greek word that's used can easily be and should be translated demonized. And I do believe that many born-again Christians are still demonized. That is, there are areas in their personality where the Holy Spirit is not yet in complete control. There's a demon that has to be dealt with. And Jesus did it. They brought to him all who were sick and those who were demonized. And notice, they didn't really come for, heal for, for deliverance, they came for healing. But in receiving healing, many of them needed deliverance from demons. And then it goes on, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. 
and he did not allow the demons to speak or to say that they knew him. You see, the demons all knew who Jesus was. And he cast out many demons. How many of you have cast out many demons? I don't ask for a demonstration, I just want to... How far are we up to the standard of Jesus? How far are we below the standard and the pattern of Jesus? You say, well, they were not Christians. That's true, they were Jews. But actually they were living basically by the law of Moses. And in most cases they were living much more righteous lives than most of the people in the United States today. They, the penalty for adultery was death. If that penalty were imposed on the American population today, we'd lose about a quarter of our people immediately. Is that right? I'm not exaggerating, am I? So don't say, well, those were people that didn't know righteousness. Many people say, well, I'm sure there are people who need to be delivered from demons, but they're in prisons or they're in lunatic asylums. That's not true. Demons actually can be very comfortable in many churches.